Want to know the best tech gear for creating your online course? Well, in this video, I'm really excited to be interviewing Sean Cannell with Think Media TV, who will be sharing his recommended gear for creating online courses. So if you are looking to buy any equipment anytime soon, you will not want to miss this, so stay tuned. Hi, Demelza and Marie here with Creative Online Courses. Now on this channel, I guide you through tips and tutorials to crush it with visual media and produce your online courses like a boss. I also show behind the scenes vlog of what it's like to be a mom entrepreneur. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. In last week's video, which you can view here, I shared how using video is probably the best way to deliver your online course. Now, also, as I mentioned in the introduction, I am really excited to be interviewing Sean Cannell today, who is going to be helping us by looking at the kind of gear that he would recommend for producing your online course. So let's dive right in. Hey, Sean, how's it going? It's going great. Super pumped to be on the uh, show talking about online video. Great. And um, can you tell me what it is that you do for those who are unaware of your channel at this point? Absolutely. Well, I say that um, I'm a full-time lifestyle entrepreneur and I in particular have built up originally just as a solo kind of YouTuber, a full-time income doing YouTube and affiliate marketing. And eventually after doing that for a while, it grew into a six-figure income and beyond and we eventually built a team. And now our passion is helping other people learn online video. I've been doing uh, video production since 2003. The first YouTube channel I ever managed was in 2007. And uh, I will tell you this, my first videos and my first YouTube content was not very good. Like I'm, I hope that you and nobody else sees it, but I started quite a long time ago. And since that time I've been learning. And now um, over the years, I've done YouTube in a lot of different industries and spaces and online video production work. And I'm passionate about helping other people do that. And we in particular have two main YouTube channels with over 700,000 subscribers now, over 43 million video views. Uh, we recently had an article in Forbes. And so we've been having some great results with video and love helping other people leverage online video, leverage YouTube, leverage online courses to build their influence, build their income, and ultimately make a greater impact. Great. And you do a lot of tech reviews, don't you? So you look at um, a wide variety of tech um, gear and things like that. Exactly. So yeah, my passion is to help people with the tips and tools for building your influence with online video. So the tips, how to get more views, what are the strategies, but then the tools, as you said, what kind of cameras I know, what kind of, you know, lighting or microphones, and that's some of the stuff that we'll be talking about today. That's right. Um, so yeah, we want to look at maybe some equipment, the tech gear that you would recommend for online course creators, depending, you know, whatever it is that they might be wanting to do, what would you recommend for them? Absolutely. Well, you know, I think the cool thing for online course creators is that to get started, you really don't need that much at all. I think that number one, I think that your smartphone is probably the greatest asset that most people have. Right. Um, you have the ability to create HD content. A lot of them will shoot 4K and they produce great results. What I do recommend though is um, a, a few accessories. Should we talk about those? Yes, absolutely. So I feel like you know, when you get started with your tripod, one thing that really, before you even get any accessories, I think that any online course creator could realize that if you set this phone up on some shoe boxes, on a box, you know, sit in front of a window or something with the lighting, yeah. you're pretty much good to go. Um, but if you were going to get a few things, the first thing I'd recommend is, is some sort of a tripod. I really like this tripod from Archon. It's about... Um, $20 on Amazon and you can just mount your phone in the grip here and set it on a table and either shoot lengthwise in kind of story mode or widescreen and you're great you're good to go just set it down and the other cool thing is that this piece on the top comes off and so I might also encourage people to invest in an, a proper tripod that is a little bit taller in case they want to do a standing video of some sort mm -hmm. But most people might already have one. What you need is just a smartphone mount that goes on top of your current tripod to give you a grip on your smartphone. And then you are good to go as far as stabilization goes. The second thing I'd recommend is some sort of a lapel mic. This is a lapel mic from Shure or Rode actually. And this one's around $80, um, a little more expensive. There is one on Amazon, it's about $13. And this allows you to just clip the mic on your shirt and if your phone still has a headphone jack, you can just plug that straight into the um, headphone jack. And now you've got a little bit of better audio. 
If it doesn't, there's usually a dongle that are on the uh, phones that don't have the headphone jack, so you can still get that. And um, and now you're you're good to go on there as well. And the one other thing I'd recommend is lighting. Uh, for those watching, when you're thinking about creating any kind of content, think about AVL, audio, video, lighting. And so how's the audio gonna sound? Well, I got this mic on now, so that's some good audio. How's the video? Well, my smartphone's gonna do great, so I've got the video. And then lastly would be lighting. Now, in front of our setup here, I just have a light on my desk kind of helping illuminate me on this webcam. Um, but for lighting, it could be as simple as, I have the window right over here, just sitting in front of the window during daylight, or investing in some kind of a um, lighting kit. There's one on um, Amazon, it's 850 watts, $75. You get two big soft boxes, only $75 here in the US, and um, you can get a nice lighting kit for video. And I have a great video on our uh, YouTube channel about that. But here's another kind of cool piece it's from Archon, it's the same people that make these legs. And this Archon light here is like a little ring light that you can um, turn on and you can even change the, um, the color of it a little bit. You can change it to, um, what do you call it? There's usually two color temperatures. There's sort of yep. daylight, which is a little more white. And then there's kind of an amber uh, color Princeton temperature. Light. Exactly, like tungsten versus the other one says the tech guy who's not sure. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so, so you've got kind of the amber color, you've got off, you've got just uh, mm -hmm. the tungsten, and then you've got a mix of both. So anyways, that guy can just clip right on top of your phone in some way, get a little bit of light right on your face. Mm -hmm. And now you've got AVL covered, just accessorizing your smartphone. That's great. I mean, when I did my first course, I just used my smartphone to record it. So... Absolutely, you can do it with your smartphone. And the one other tip I would recommend is actually a webcam. So I'm using a Logitech webcam right now. This webcam is about $45 um, on Amazon. So very affordable. You know, a lot of laptops have a webcam built in. Those are typically not the best if you're going to maybe shoot a lot of modules for your course. But I would say that for a lot of course creation, a computer and a webcam might be all you need. And I know when we do our courses, we do basically kind of screen share like a webinar where I'm on camera a little bit, but I'm also using a USB mic and I'm sharing slides. I'm teaching off of PowerPoint or like a slide share program. Yep. And so for course creation too, before we get into even other kinds of cameras, I think really just a webcam, we always have to, we always have to remember that it's always the content value, not mm -hmm. the production value that matters. Now we want our stuff to look good and professional, but if you are delivering the goods as it pertains to the content, I don't think you need to worry too much about the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, as you say, content is king, right? Yep. So um, great. So what would you um, recommend for those who are doing things like the creative arts, like arts, crafts, cooking, or things within the house, which um, those, those kind of courses? Yeah, I would recommend um, for that uh kind of content. I think that your stabilization, again, your kind of tripod matters a lot because you're going to want to be able to get it positioned right. If you're in the kitchen, you'd want a good tripod. So I grabbed um, this one. It's from, um, we actually just did a video out. It's on Think Media full review, but it's by k &F Concept. Comes in at about $80. And what's nice about it is it's not just, you know, not just a proper tripod, but you can also give it that um, side angle where if you want your camera to go sideways like your DSLR. But what's really cool about a, um, a camera or a tripod like this is you actually can invert it pretty easy and you would still need to spread all the three legs out on either side, but you can invert it so you can get that top down shot that a lot of crafters, a lot of DIY okay. people want. And so once you get that set up, then you can angle the camera sort of to the side and you could be pointing straight down and working on your craft kind of content. Archon, and to spell that out, it's A-R-K-O-N, that makes these, these $20 legs. Also has a few arms that lets you kind of get that inverted shot for crafting, for art. So you can check out some of the Archon um, tripods, different solutions that they have on Amazon or on their website for that overhead shot that so many people want. Right. No, that's a really good tip. And I feel like that with a smartphone, that that is a, a great way to go. But in this case, and this is for all course creation, you might want to move and upgrade into something like a DSLR. 
And this is the Canon SL2. This is the most budget DSLR that um, I can think of. It still comes in around $600, I believe, with the lens, but the video quality is gonna be full pro video quality. And for content creators and course creators, you really can start producing the next level of content for all the things you need to do, including photography, thumbnails, pictures yeah. for the modules inside of your course, pictures of your final completed work that you wanna share on social media. And then of course, video clips, whether that's um, those tighter, you know, the reason people want DSLRs a lot of times is because it gives you that blurry background. It gives you almost that cinematic um, video look that you can't create typically mm -hmm. with a smartphone. And so something like this is really a, a tool that allows you to do multiple things, pretty much everything um, that you might need to do to create that next level of content. But then it also comes with the next level of learning curve. So <laughs> that's where I think that starting with a smartphone or maybe a simpler point and shoot camera is a good way to get started because, um, if you get too complex and too technical too soon, it can sometimes put a bottleneck in the actual completion of your course. And if you haven't got your first course done yet, you want to get it out there. You want to start generating some income, get the lessons that you're learning, and then keep leveling up your tech as you go. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to do too much at first because we've all been there. You're like, I don't know what this button does. It looked fine and now it looks wrong. What happened? The shot looks weird. There is yep. a lot of, the more moving parts and buttons and dials you get, the more chance you also have for uh, errors, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> what about um, point and shoot? Do you have a recommendation for someone who doesn't necessarily want to use their phone but doesn't want to go quite as high as a DSLR? Absolutely. And one of the things I should mention about this camera, why it's great for content creators and course creators that are solo is it has this flip out screen so that okay. you could see yourself. And so I like to, if you're filming um, or if you were filming down like this and you wanted to, you know, be able to get that shot to really compose it, a, a very angle flip out screen is great, which as we talk about our point and shoot, that's what I also would recommend as well. This is a Canon G7X Mark II. This is probably the most popular camera um, for YouTube vloggers, for people who want to walk around, film themselves. Um, also, even film cooking videos, whatever else. You can basically do everything that the DSLR can in the point and shoot. You just don't have an interchangeable lens. It, the lens is always going to be fixed on there. And the image quality is not quite as good because it's a little more compact. But people, I think, would be blown away by the image quality, the results of this camera. And then it also has a flip screen, which is why a lot of um, uh, vloggers like it because they can see themselves, hold the camera, see the composition of the, so of the shot. Mm -hmm. And this comes in around $600 here in the US. It is the Mark II version. So that means the ver first version, which is pretty similar, um, mm -hmm. is also been driven down in price. So I would almost think you could pick up a point shoot like this Maybe if you were if you were even looking for refurbished or open box or something like that, for around five hundred dollars or even four hundred dollars for the Mark One version of the Canon G7X. Okay, and what about audio when it comes to those cameras? How do you um, set it up with the microphone? So if it comes to cameras like this, this G7X um, only has onboard audio. It only has the audio that there's no mic input. There's no way to do external audio. So. There's ways around that. If you want to have more professional audio, you can get what's called an external audio recorder of some sort. Um, I like the Zoom H1, which is $100. It's a little audio recorder. You can also plug mics into it. But now in video editing, you'd be recording the video separate and the audio separate, and you need to sync them up in post. Mm -hmm. So that can be kind of a hassle. Um, so on a camera like this, the Canon SL2, there's a mic input. And with a mic input like that, now you could similarly take um, this lapel mic that we were using for our phone. You could plug that into your mic input on the camera and hook that onto your shirt. And uh, now you're good to go. Now, one kind of distinction that'll really serve people is that these um, jacks that work if, with a smartphone have three black lines on them. They're actually okay. called TRSSS, I think. And that third line is because is meant to work with a smartphone, the same as like your Apple headphone jacks have three lines on it. 
Mm-hmm. And um, that means it's not just left and right, but also microphone. And so if you take a three line plug though, and you plug it into one that's meant to have a traditional audio cable, which would be like two black lines, TRS, Okay. I think, and I probably messed that up. Sorry for any audio professionals. <laughs> Um, but they just, they wouldn't necessarily work. So there are converters. In fact, I realize I can share my screen with you. Okay. So there's one called, um, by road, it's called the SC4. And this will illustrate it perfectly, kind of what we're talking about. Essentially, um, it, this SC4 will turn a two prong into a three prong, if that makes sense. So yep. you can see the three black lines on there. And then yep. the SC3 will turn a two into a three. So, so one of these cables, so to bring it home, if you wanted to use your smartphone intended microphone that has the three uh, prongs on it in the Canon SL2, which wants the two prongs, you would use that SC3 and vice versa. So actually having both of those cables I just showed on hand makes Mm -hmm. you very nimble to convert any type of mic into any other type of mic so they could interchangeably work between like a DSLR or a smartphone. We just went pretty deep there, but I think that'll help people. (laughs) Yeah, no, I think that's great because otherwise people might end up wondering why their audio isn't working properly and wondering what's gone wrong. Absolutely. Um, What about the outdoor setup? So if someone is doing outdoor um, uh, courses like farming or DIY or horse riding sports, that kind of thing. What would you recommend as any additional gear that would be specific for that type of course? Yeah, I think, you know, for outdoor, uh, definitely a good tripod. Um, I think any of these cameras, including smartphone, um, would work. However, for outdoor, I feel like having some um, zoom would be important. And, you know, Mm -hmm. The, the zoom of this is going to be limited. The, uh, in a, it's a fixed lens uh, of the Canon G7X. The SL2 zoom, you can interchange the le- le- uh, lenses, but that's also a little bit limited. For most content creators and course creators, I think that um, an actual video camera, which is kind of funny that a lot of times a video creator like me, I actually don't talk about video cameras very much. Mm-hmm. And, but here's what I mean, because we shoot with a lot of DSLRs. Yep. These, these cameras have uh, record limits. They actually only record for 30 minutes at a time typically, but because of being kind of a YouTube creator and creating these shorter type of videos, um, we never need all that record limit. Whereas right. um, for some people, maybe if you were going to create a course, you wanted to teach in front of a whiteboard for an hour at a time and upload all 10 modules, Actually, a camcorder would serve a lot of people. And the cool thing is they can be very affordable. So if you were to grab like this Canon Vixia uh, R800, you've got a couple things going for you. You can see right there, you've got the microphone jack and a headphone jack. It's something that's also interesting about some of these DSLRs. They don't have headphone jacks. (laughs) So for an all around content creation device, now, you might wonder too, like, whoa, at, at 219, like what a deal, et cetera. And I think so. I think for most people, when they just want yeah. to get their, their point across, this is like the ideal camera. The reason why I don't shoot uh, uh, my YouTube videos are on that is that the picture quality just doesn't compare to this. But again, mm-hmm. we go back to, I mean, I'm a tech YouTuber, as you mentioned. I'm worried about some of that being a little fancier. You still are going to get 1080p, uh, you know, HD out of that camera. You're not going to have any record limits. It's also easier to use, easier to focus. And so a tool like that would be great. And you're also going to have a lot more zoom. And so it it has, um, it mentions 30 time, 32 X optical zoom. So if you, you mentioned horseback riding or something, if you wanted to be able to zoom in, have a nice tripod to follow somebody as well as also zoom out, that's going to be probably one of the most versatile tools, um, for outdoor kind of content. Well, video is visual and audio. You want the audio to be good quality too. You're, you're totally right. And I've, you know, I really believe that most people will actually tolerate decent video quality, but if the audio quality is bad, it's what will fatigue them the quickest. Even their ears, it's harder to follow along. If there's a lot of air noise, background noise. So really investing in audio is probably one of the most important things of especially creating courses. And if we were to take it back just to touch on it, 
you know, we mentioned also using a webcam yep. um, if for creating courses. I would recommend if you're using any kind of teaching to get a USB microphone. This is a blue snowball. It's one of the popular microphones mm -hmm. that um, at $50, for $50, you can um, uh, pick one of those up on Amazon, set it on a desk, or it could go on like a, an arm kind of like this. This is a, a Rode microphone, a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, but a USB microphone that plugs into your laptop, your yep. Mac, your desktop really can level up your audio. And then you can use that in combination with um, a webcam or as a course creator too, you could potentially make a slideshow or some kind of other training. You might just record a voiceover track and right. then the footage you shot with other cameras and you brought all into your editing, you then teach and describe through uh, on there. What about those who are doing um, things where they're walking around a lot, where, where there's a lot of movement? Is there anything that you would recommend as, uh, to help get a nice smooth look to the video? So I grabbed this. Um, it's actually not going to provide a lot of smoothness, but when it comes to walking around a lot, this is another style of camera. It's a mirrorless camera. Um, but if you were to use like the G7X, I like this is a Joby SLR Gorillapod. Okay. Um, I think these come in at about $32 and I like having, um, this, so here's the G seven X. A lot of vloggers will actually use this. It does make it kind of a look ridiculous, but it gives you a lot more grip and it allows you to, you could, you know, move these legs, set it on a table. And a lot of vloggers will, uh, people that walk around will hold up something like this. Now, one thing I look for that this camera has is it has IS, it says camera zoom lens. 4.2x IS. IS means image stabilization. Okay. So the cameras that have built in IS, I, I, and what you also want is you want that to be optical and not electronic or digital if possible. Mm -hmm. And that means like the lens is stabilized. That'll take some of the shakiness out. And typically even um, this, uh, you could look at some of these camcorders, they would have IS that we were talking about. Um, and that'll take out some of the shake. But if you were gonna walk around a lot, you probably want like a gimbal. And so uh, the one popular one is like the DJI Osmo. And okay. this, we, this was actually just revealed recently, uh, a new version at $129. Mm -hmm. um, it is a three axis gimbal stabilizer that allows you to kind of go in selfie mode. But because, it's mechanical, it's, it, it is a, um, a gimbal, and also known as a gimbal stabilizer or a three-axis gimbal stabilizer. That's how people get that perfectly smooth footage, whether it's walking, but it's as if the camera is floating. So 129, and you're good to go on using a gimbal for your smartphone. If you wanna start getting a gimbal that's for a heavier camera like this, now we're talking 700, 800 or more, dollars okay. just for that act. and you're also gonna it's gonna weigh a f you know a ton because you don't have just the way of the camera you also have so if you want to walk around and film yourself that's probably not what i would recommend um but that's if you were researching and you really wanted that smooth walking around that's what you're looking for you're looking for a three axis gimbal or a gimbal stabilizer of some kind um what i might recommend finally in the content creation of a lot of movement is potentially considering uh, filming static, meaning setting up the tripod, filming kind of narrating without too much movement because mm -hmm. capturing movement can be challenging. And then yep. using B-roll, using that extra footage that you mm -hmm. lay over what you narrate. And that could be shots of you walking or moving or demonstrating or showing things. Um, okay. But I would find, you know, one example, a friend of mine and big YouTuber, uh, John Kohler from Growing Your Greens. He sells juicers. He helps people with gardening. He does a lot of tutorials on gardening. He uses a Canon Vixia, as we described, a yep. refurbished model. He, bu he, he buys those for uh, 150. He has someone help him film, but he just has them hold the camera and film them around um, as he walks through his garden and just try to be as steady as possible. So mm -hmm. I sometimes like um, something like this. I just kind of put it against my body. Yep. This is a little bit of stabilization and, and then the two hands on it. And if I was going to follow somebody, you know, it'd just be like walking around. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Um, and there's still going to be some shake, but I think people would be okay with that. The, the reason yeah. you invest in a gimbal is if you wanted it to be almost cinematic. Um, but obviously it has other challenges that come along with it as well. 
Right, yeah, sure. So are there any other um, tools or tech gear that you would recommend that we haven't talked about or has that pretty much covered it? I mean, I think that, again, you just go back to if you're planning out your project, make your plan around your AVL, you know, just think about your audio, think about your lighting, think about your camera, um, your video. And, and for courses in particular, then you also might be thinking about your content. And so that could be tools like, I use Camtasia, for example, it's software. Mm -hmm. Yep. We recorded uh, modules for one of our courses called Video Ranking Academy with Camtasia using PowerPoint and using a USB microphone. And I actually was not on camera in that course, at least for those portions of it. So I just, I was able to screen catch, record my screen. And I'm sure you've talked about some of those different options, but there's Camtasia, there's some free recording softwares, there's different ones. Mm -hmm. I, I'm on a PC, there's different ones for Mac. Thinking about that, and then also thinking about um, like another tool I like is actually called Graphics River, and um, where we build out our slide design is on a site like this. And you can go into PowerPoint templates. I used to use PowerPoint, and you could just grab for fifteen dollars. You can grab visual. Um, you know, pretty impressive slides hmm. that, um, you know, again, $15. And now you could quickly take the Word document or the Google document or the content that you're ready to teach and really polish it up. I mean, it, it can look beautiful and people will be like, wow, where'd you get all these design skills? And then don't tell them your secret. Don't tell <laughs> them that you watch this show. And for $15, you were able to completely change the game. So I like to think through of all the elements. And I think that's yep. one of them for a lot of course creators is if you're doing any kind of teaching, thinking about your slide design and your software for recording that. Um, okay. The only other things I can think about were, um, do you use a ring light to talk? Cause I know that I've used a ring light sometimes with it, my recordings. Do you recommend that or? Yes. And so, um, uh, we can mention, and, and definitely there's a lot of content out that people can check out later. I have this, uh, it's a Halo Prismatic uh, ring light, and this video is on YouTube. Um, I also did one ring lights, can be uh, popular for females doing beauty and makeup videos, so we kind of talked about it as a ring light for makeup here. But that's um, probably my favorite one, is um, it's called the Halo Prismatic. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of great, the Diva ring light is out there. Um, as well. And um, I think they are great. Now, one thing it, it's, it's sort of, it could be hard. The a warning would be for people who have glasses, mm -hmm. because if you put the ring light right in front of you, the rings will be right in there. The solution yep. to that is usually for glasses, you would need two light sources. And what you want to do is you want to move the lights over and up pointing down until they disappear from your glasses, keep mm -hmm. working with it. And then sometimes you might need to keep your gaze. Cause if you look up, you'll obviously sew the lights. And so yes. not that people, not that two ring lights would be the answer to that, but that would be one solution that okay. if you, you, two would essentially create two light sources and you wouldn't have that directly in your eyes. And the other thing is some people even mention that they say, you look weird. You got a ring in your eyes. Um, <laughs> right. And sometimes you can adjust that by just changing the positioning. But I think ring, ring lights are a great lighting source. And um, my favorite lighting source, a little bit more expensive, it's at $500, but they are um, workhorse panels they're these Fulvatec bicolor led panels huh. and just like the little light i showed you they're bicolor so you can make them either tungsten or the other one as we we're talking about yep. Um, yep. and so this is called uh Fulvatec, uh bicolor actually they dropped in price majorly this might be a special mm -hmm. sale or something but at 350 um you've get two of these guys maybe that's oh yeah this is i'm gonna let my team know about this. We should promote this out. It's, it's a really great deal. So anyways, yeah. So a light kit like that, uh, you know, a little bit more of an investment, but they uh, are very durable and we've been using them, I think for years now, actually. So, okay. um, so those are also great. Okay, great. Um, and anything that you would recommend for outdoor lighting at all? Typically on outdoor lighting. I mean, I guess um, I, I like uh, on camera. I have a couple on camera lights that I like. Um, one is, let's see, like, um, Neewer lights that are kind of like plug, 
you can plug them onto your camera. There are these lights right here. You can see a picture there. Mm -hmm. um, and so a little on-camera LED light. This is also nice if you travel anywhere. Now these lights are great because they're, um, it says currently unavailable, it's odd, but they're about $23. Okay. And you could see them here in this uh, kind of picture. They just go right on your camera, just like that. And um, in most cases, if you're outside, usually if it's bright out, the light would overpower any kind of light that you have. But as it gets darker or whatnot, what you would usually call that light if it went right on camera is a fill light. Mm -hmm. Because typically outside, if the light's coming down, it'll put shadows under your eyes. It'll create crazy. So you want to fill in the person's face with a fill yeah. light. And um, it's battery powered. You can buy a couple of batteries. And so um, if people want to look that up too, it's the uh, best cheap lighting for YouTube videos 2018. And um, I'll look into, um, I'm not sure when those will be back in stock, but. Okay, great. Well, I think that's, I mean, I don't, can't think of any other tech stuff. Do you have any other um, tips just for course creation in general? Because um, obviously you've made some courses yourself. Just any tips that you can give to someone who's wanting to create their course? Yeah, I think that um, a couple of things. I think I would encourage all course creators, especially if it's your first time, you probably already have recognized that it's hard, but it's always harder than you think it's going to be. I've learned that. Have you ever learned that, right? Yeah. That uh, just uh, sometimes you have that real, you get pumped because of the idea. And then you start, you're like, oh, this is kind of hard. And then you're like, oh, this is actually kind of easy. And then you're like, no, actually, this is pretty hard. And it's like a roller coaster. <laughs> so yeah. I just want to encourage people that, um, you know, your first one is always your most challenging. And then you kind of get used to the pattern and the rhythm. Um, I think that you kind of just got to do it. And I would say something we say a lot is done is better than perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, as course creators, we could endlessly polish. It could, it, of course, it could be always better. It's something this slide could have been better. Or this could have been better. Or that and and that's totally true. But one of the things I've learned is that you want to get it to market as soon as possible, and you can always update it and change it later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we really believe in uh, beta. Um, we've even, and for us, we've even done things where we are oftentimes even sell a course before it's created mm -hmm. just in case that nobody's interested rather than go to all the work, creating it in a silo without any feedback from anybody. Yep. We'd like to see, is anyone interested first? If they are, then we can create it. Maybe say you'll deliver one module a week and then all right. you have to do is deliver on what you sold up front. So yep. I've learned that tip. And the other tip is, is beta learning that what is the, in other startups, they call it like the minimal viable product. Like what's the smallest, most minimal deliverable we could give to people? And then how could we make it better over time? So for us, when we originally launched Video Ranking Academy in um, the first quarter of 2016, we actually went beta round one. We didn't even have graphics done or this or that done. Then we waited a few months and we actually went beta round two. We got more people in it, got some different case studies, testimonials, different things in the process. And it was about six months until we launched the real product, although we had launched it along the way. And yeah. I'm so grateful we did that. And a lot of mentors help, helped me do that. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is they create too much in a world without getting feedback. They don't create their course in community. They mm -hmm. create it in um, seclusion and then they're surprised when it's not, it's just not going to be as good either. If you're not getting the feedback, you're not getting people in there. So done is better than perfect. Get it done, get it done in its simplest version. You can always deliver on more stuff later and um, always improve it later. Our, our video quality goes up, our um, content yeah. goes up, but yeah. if we had never got version one out, we would never be to version oh two, three, or four that we're on now, so. Right, that's yep. true. Great, um, so just to wrap things up, where can people go for more help and um, to check out what you're doing online? And uh, so yeah, where should they go? Absolutely, a couple sites. You could go to Think Media. If you um, go over on YouTube and just type in Think Media, it'll get you there. And um, that is a site all about the best tips and tools. So uh, everything that we talked about, uh, it's going to probably be on here. Best cameras for YouTube. You can see example footage from them. Uh, a lot of different tech gear reviews. And then the other channels, Video Influencers. If anybody wants to learn more about how to grow their influence with video, it's a weekly interview show. Uh, I run this channel with a uh, biz partner, Benji Travis. And um, 
just tips for how to get views, how to get subscribers, how to get awareness, how to get known. You know, one of the biggest things with creating a course is once you have it, now you need customers. You need people to even know about exactly. that. And video is one of the best ways to do that. It's one of the best ways to build know, like, and trust with people online because we can see you, hear you at least a little bit, get a vibe beyond yep. just audio or text. And so leveraging tools like YouTube, Instagram, Facebook video. So think media and video influencers are uh, valuable. And the final thing would be um, if people really in particular want to go with YouTube this year, we have a free webinar. It's at tubeinfluence.com. The uh, replay is available for a while. So that's T U B E influence.com and, and you can watch it's an hour-long training and it talks about our our course and we mentioned it right we're talking about courses video rank it academy is mentioned at the end that's our yep. sig signature program that helps people uh grow their youtube channels but even if that's not right for people in your community definitely check out that webinar it is uh, an hour long with lots of training to really help people crush it with video this year yeah and i actually totally recommend actually doing that because um i did that course and I actually went ahead and got to VRA and it's been so helpful. And as you say, it's, we got to market the course at the end of the day, nobody's going to hear it unless we get it out there. So that's a huge part, I think as well, that we got to keep in mind. And I think your channel is great. I totally recommend following you and uh, video influencers. And um, I think people get a lot of value out of that. Demelza, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm pumped that you're uh, plugged into our stuff and it was awesome being on your show. Well, I don't know about you, but I found those suggestions really helpful. And there are a few things that are going to be going on my wish list. What about you? Is there anything that you want to put on your wish list? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in more tips and tutorials on visual media or producing your online courses, there are some videos right here you can check out now. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell notification for um, alerts on future videos that are coming out, and we will talk soon.